Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Trent. This is Rams Talk. Thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in and for everyone who's a new subscriber, thanks for jumping on board and joining the community. For all the legacy subscribers, thanks for all, you conti all your continued support and conversation. If you haven't subscribed and are a fan of the Rams or just like uh, some good football talk, please jump on, please uh, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Real LA Rams Talk. So, we have um, a big game coming up this week against the Seattle Seahawks, second uh, matchup of the year. This is this one's in LA, and needless to say, I like the Rams in this game. However, looking back on the previous game, um, the Rams uh, we were coming off of the win against the Vikings. The Seahawks were like really banged up and injured, and everyone was just just counting this game as a victory for the Rams, easy win, easy win. But it was a grind, and the Rams had to come from behind and win this game. Uh, very tough, always tough against Seattle, no matter like what talent you think they have. They're coached well, um, and they just have a lot of grit. And they still have Russell Wilson, they still have Bobby Wagner, so they they're, they still have Tyler Lockett. They're a good team, so we're not going to take them light, lightly this time around. However, you know they don't have the support of the 12th man in Seattle, um, and so let's look back on the last game and kind of what Seattle did. Uh, they ran the ball. They rushed for 190 yards behind Chris Carson and Mike Davis. They averaged 5.9 yards per carry, so that's definitely one thing the Rams are gonna have to kind of limit uh, going forward in this game. Chris Carson has a practice all week. He might not even play, he has a hip injury, so it could be Mike Davis and uh, Rashad Penny or uh, CJ Procise um, in the mix. So that would definitely weaken the running attack a little bit. Good thing for the Rams. Um, they also, that was a game where Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks were knocked out with concussions. That I think still think that was a dirty play on Brandon Cooks. But, um, you know, that's going to be a big deal having those guys back healthy against the Seahawks. Um, the, also, Seahawks in the last game had, they were 7 for 12 on third downs. A lot of that is that Russell Wilson magic where you kind of hold him for the first two downs and he kind of does a scramble around, scrambles out, picks up the yards, or does a little dink off. When the defense is scrambling, so uh, they're gonna have to do the Rams are gonna have to do a much better job on third down to stop that. Um, you know, Jared Goff threw two interceptions. One of those was in the the end zone. Remember, there was a block pump by Corey Littleton towards the beginning of the game, put the Rams right there in the red zone, and then they threw an interception. It was kind of like bounced off a of girly. There was a hand in there, uh, and then they went down and scored. So uh, uncharacteristic of Jared Goff to throw two interceptions. Todd Gurley had three touchdowns in that game. Didn't have a lot of yards, but he had three TDs. Cairo Santos hit a very meaningful field goal, but the Rams really rallied in that game and came back. Uh, that was also Marcus Peters got burned for three touchdowns in that game. Uh, one against Lockett, two against uh, Moore. And so Marcus Peters, please don't get burned again. Um, so Baldwin also wasn't really a factor in that game. He looks to be a little healthier in this game. He's kind of been battling injuries all season. But I look at the key matchups to be Bobby Wagner against Todd Gurley. Bobby Wagner is one of the best linebackers in football and he's all over the place. There's no denying that. So how will the Rams how will he affect the Rams running game? The Rams offensive line though is amazing. I don't see the, um, the Seahawks getting much pressure. They have Frank Clark who is, I think it's maybe because his name isn't like a sexy name, but he's been in the top 10 in sacks since 2016 in the NFL. And I think he had a sack in the last game too. So Frank Clark is a legit player that the Rams need to protect against. However, outside of him, and I want to say there was another guy like Jaron Reed or whatever, he, uh, those two are the only guys really having any pass rush for the Seahawks. And so they really need, um, I'm not really too worried about the pass rush um, affecting the Rams in this game. KJ Wright was out last game. He's been, he was against the Rams. He was binged up last week. So he might not play. Not sure what the status will be for him. Maybe a game time decision, but that he's a linebacker and that will, um, that, that should help the Seahawks if he can go. Now, I think the big advantage the Rams have and kind of what they have every week is their wide receiver matchups uh, against other teams secondary. So last week against the Chargers, Trey Flowers, their cornerback, got burned twice on um, back shoulder throws from Phillip Rivers to Mike Williams and for touchdowns. The first one, he was like really on it. It was just a good throw and catch, but Brandon Cooks against Trey Flowers is gonna be a very interesting matchup uh, since Brandon Cooks really didn't do anything last time because of the concussion. I like to see that, um, see how see how that plays out. Also, I mean, the Rams receivers in general, I mean, um, 
Robert Woods should be going against um, Shaq Griffin, rookie. I like Woods in that matchup, obviously. And then Cooper Cup against Justin Coleman. I like Cooper Cup in that matchup. So basically, all the Rams receivers have favorable matchups. Now, there's all these like favorable matchups and you know grades that the Rams you know like have more talent and have higher grades than the Seahawks. But the Seahawks just kind of grind it and they kind of slow things down. So um, even though on paper the Rams have an advantage almost everywhere, um, it should be much closer than that. So um, those are interesting matchups to to look at. Um, what is Marcus Peters going to do? I think that it's crazy how we went from like dissing Troy Hill all the time to now Marcus Peters. Like crazy how that's turned. Uh, remember the pick six of week one against Oakland such a long time ago, like a different season almost. But Marcus Peters, you look at, I, I was looking at the highlights from the first game against the Seahawks. Um, he's just always looking at the quarterback, like trying to jump a route. And then the receiver, like that, that second of hesitation look back, the receiver's just going on the route. I mean, they're just running routes and Marcus Peters is not not even like staying with them. So um, I think that his pride has really been hurt. He's never, this has never happened to him in his career. And I, I'm hoping that this fuels him and the coaches work with him to kind of turn that around. Um, also, one thing I like to, to see the Rams do better than they kind of have all season is Wade, is real, Wade Phillips is really good at making those halftime defensive adjustments. Um, like look at the Saints, look at all the, the games that they play. They, they really kind of sometimes start slow and then, and then defensively and then really make those stops in the second half. I like to see that happen earlier in the game. So it just it's not this night and day type of deal, but maybe they can make these adjustments on the fly. Um, even though Tyler Lockett isn't a big household name, the dude is fast. Doug Baldwin, if he's healthy, he's still a factor. So they got to keep those guys in check, and and obviously with the running game, um, they got to keep those guys in check. I think Todd Gurley though will actually rush for closer to 100 yards. I think the Rams really try and pound it. I, I the Rams are also um, they have the lowest percentage of three and outs in football at 15 percent. Their 15 percent three and out uh, percentage is amazing. Um, seems like under Jeff Fisher everything was three and out. Um, whereas the Seahawks have the worst defense on three and outs. So that's, I've, watching this game, see how many three and outs there are. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't a single one. So I think that they always will kind of pick up a first down. I mean, I'm very confident in saying that, but who knows. Um, Robert Woods, the guy is, uh, he's only 26. He's in his prime. He's a top 10, um, pro football focus, focus has him as a top five receiver grade, but in yardage, he's top 10. And he's just not a name, kind of like Frank Clark for Seattle, but Robert Woods is not a name. Um, I know him, I think a lot of Rams fans in LA know him from a long time ago because he played on USC, but he, um, he went to Buffalo, second round pick. He was a second round pick. Um, it wasn't like this random fifth rounder. Um, was injured, had Buffalo uh, quarterbacks to throw him the ball, so wasn't too successful. And now he's like, his potential is unlocked or unleashed and he's going over the middle and he's a big time guy. So um, I'm really happy for Robert Woods and we got him on such a great deal. We have him for like three more years, um, much cheaper than we have Brandon Cook. So Robert Woods is a really good value, really good locker room guy, um, big fan of everything he's done. Um, now Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald going against Seattle. Uh, Russell Wilson is the quarterback he sacked the most. I mean, yeah, they play twice a year, so that definitely is a factor in it, but he sacked them eight times. The Rams are also 17-0 when Aaron Donald has at least one sack in a game. I'm pretty sure Aaron Donald's going to get a sack in this game. Uh, he's going to be matched up against um, their center and switching between the two guards. One of those guards is DJ Fluker, and he was a guy after the last game kind of had some talking some smack about uh, the Rams defense wasn't very physical. They don't want to play physical. Um, and so I think that was kind of one of those like locker room deals that, the, that they've been paying attention to. And I saw this thing on Twitter from Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks uh, Twitter account. And it was like, get to know DJ Fluker. And he's actually a kind of a funny dude. He's, he played at Alabama, deep South guy. You can totally tell it, but his name DJ stands for Danny Jesus. And on a good day, he can eat 80 plus chicken wings in one sitting. So, and just a little extra juice on 
DJ Fluker, but I feel that the Rams defensive line is going to get after it. And uh, I think that just like in years past, that uh, Russell Wilson is going to be feeling it uh, come, come Monday from the Rams pass rush. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think really when it comes down to it is don't take this game for granted, even though we're playing at home, even though they look like a lesser opponent, even though they're, a little, they're way more banged up than we are. Um, and speaking of banged up, uh, Aqib Talib, he will be, he's looking like to, he might return against the Lions after our bye week on December 2nd. So something to look forward to. But um, I, I, I feel like the Rams, just their offense is, is just once again too, too dynamic. Uh, the Seahawks also, Tedrick Thompson, their safety, he uh, has been banged up and hasn't practiced, so he may not play. He's the guy who hit Brandon Cooks, and he's had a, he filled in for uh, Errol Thomas, and he's had a really, really good season. So they might be missing him, but I feel like with their, some of their injuries, if Chris Carson can't go, KJ Wright might be limited, Tedrick Thompson might be limited. The Rams are at full strength, except for Aqib Tlaib. I see the Rams really taking this game. Um, not really taking this game, but I feel like they're the better team and they should win. Their special teams is great. Oh, and Janikowski has not been all that great. He's one of the worst field goal kickers in sports and he's also like 500 pounds. So, um, and then the last thing, I'm gonna, this is my question to everyone watching, but what is the, what, tell me how many pieces of gum will Hollywood Pete Carroll go through in this game? Will he just stick with one piece of gum and chew the hell out of it the whole time? Like when it's like rock hard in the fourth quarter? Or will he, my over under is three and a half sticks of gum. Will he have fewer or more? Because every time you look at him, he is working that gum like nothing, nothing I've ever seen. So hit me up, let me know. Also, quick shout out to Chris Jones, my old roommate, Seattle Seahawks fan, should be a Rams fan. Just, I know you married into it. You can divorce it. You can divorce the fandom. Stay with the girl, but divorce the Seahawks. Be a Rams fan. You're from LA, let's do it. Anyways, uh, I wanna thank everyone for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you wanna get awesome Rams content, content please do it here. You can watch some of my other videos. Last video I did about the Saints game, I had like over 100 comments. So much, so many Saints fans pouring in and talking about it. If you're a Seahawks fan, welcome. This is a safe place. You can talk smack, just keep it respectable. Um, Cause we all, I'm always trying to understand your team and other opponents teams and your takes. So it's all friendly here. It's all good stuff. So um, anyways, that's it. Subscribe, watch other videos and until next time, go Rams.